Hello everyone, this is David and Kesa reporting for BBC School Report Eastleigh News. Some Eastleigh students have been involved with the BBC Make It Digital alongside the BBC staff learning about the importance of learning code. Here's MJ and Joyce to tell you all about it. Thank you, David and Casey. Make It Digital is a UK-wide initiative created by the BBC in order to inspire people to get creative with coding, programming and digital technology. We went to the official launch of Make It Digital where we got the chance to interview the Chief Executive of Google and also David Allen. What do you do? Well, I'm retired, but I, uh, way back in the 19, late 1970s, in the 80s, I was responsible for the BBC Micro uh, computer uh, product, project. I was, the, uh, I was the project editor. What do you think about young people taking an interest in coding? In coding, I think it's a very good idea, and it's terribly important, I think, for the economy of the country, that people should really know deep down how to make computers do things, you know. Uh, and I'm particularly interested in them, you know, controlling things, monitoring things not just games. I think games is fun, you know, clearly, but um, some of the other stuff is really more important. Uh, you know, people could inv be inventing all kinds of devices that are controlled by computers uh, that could make a lot of money for the country. The BBC also has plans to distribute the microbit to all your seven pupils across the UK. The microbit is a small device with an LED display that can be programmed in various ways, aiming to engage children in coding activities. The microbit can be used as a badge and can also be connected using wireless Bluetooth. The microbit can also be programmed to display words such as names and can also be programmed to display emoticons. Another application in Make It Digital is the release of web app Datapic. A Datapic can help students and teachers to understand coding using CSS and HTML. Earlier on, we had a go at creating our own Datapic based on the statistics that we found at the Make It Digital launch. We found it really fun and easy, and we recommend it for you guys to try it too. Back to David and Casey. As you may know, we're having our first full solar eclipse this Friday in over a decade. To celebrate, the students and teachers of Eastleigh Community School have created our own solar eclipse party. Here's your Gile to tell you more about it. Hi, we're here with Mr. Richards reporting on the solar eclipse party. So Mr. Richards, what is the solar eclipse party about? Well, tomorrow morning there's going to be a partial solar eclipse across the whole of the northern um, part of Europe and we're lucky enough to be able to see it here in London. We should be able to see about 85% of the eclipse happening. So at 8 o'clock, students from Year 7 and Year 8 are going to come and join us and we're going to be using some equipment to have a look at, to be able to observe the solar eclipse happening safely and also to try to take some measurements about light and temperature to see how those change as the eclipse is happening. And how are the students getting involved with this activity? Well, in Year 7 and Year 8, students are getting involved. They're all helping to build the equipment that we're going to be using to observe it. We're going to be using some webcams with a pinhole camera and also some temperature sensing and light sensing devices as well so that we're going to be able to closely monitor the, uh, the eclipse. Also, when the students come in at 8 o'clock, we're also going to have some food and some explanation and also maybe a little bit of eclipse dances. Thank you. I've now got to mount this inside the box using sticky tape. Sticky. Yeah? So what I need to do now is I need two volunteers. I need one person who's going to be able to support the box and the camera. Yes, please. And I need one person who's going to be able to mark the box with the optimal camera position. And everybody else, what you need to do is tell me or tell the person who's doing the marking when the camera is in the right place so that you can only see the screen and as much of the inside of the box basically. We don't want to see the edges of the box, we just want to see the white page at the back. Uh, so what have you been doing today in your lesson? Well, um, we've just come in and um, because there's a solar eclipse that's going on to, um, tomorrow, we've been um, looking at the uh, technology that we're going to be using tomorrow to look at the solar eclipse, obviously, because we can't look at it with our eyes because it will damage them. And then we've been um, looking at the data that's going to be used and we're going to make a graph about that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Yogile. At Eastleigh Community School, we have a group of students passionate about the environment. These eco-champions have started a recycling scheme. Here's Laura, one of Eco Champions members, to tell you more about it. 
Thank you, David and Casey. Regarding the recycling scheme, we have one of our year 10 eco champion students, Sylvania. So, Sylvania, who are the eco champions? The eco champions are a group of students aiming to protect the school's environment. What are one of their most recent achievements? One of our most recent achievements is the recycling bins. So the Econ Champions came out with a recycling scheme for cardboard and paper. And we went to small meetings with the council. And through the meetings, we got them to donate us 180 recycling bins. So when we received them, the students had to clean them and make them presentable. What is your next step? We are looking into reducing food waste. So we are trying to get the food waste turned, turned into compost. That's amazing. Now, we have Ms. Woodhouse, who is a corporate service manager. So, Ms. Woodhouse, um, about the recycling scheme, how successful have the bins been so far? I think they've been very successful, probably more so than we originally thought, because we're filling the bins up quicker than the company can come and collect them. What is happening to the collected paper and cardboard? The company called um, Paper Round, they come and collect them, they take them to their recycling area. They are sorted by hand into three categories. Um, white paper can go to Germany because it's got the most environmental value. Um, things like magazines are also recycled into paper but it's a lesser quality but it's still recyclable and we can purchase that through the company. Cardboard is actually recycled back into cardboard and used again for packaging material. Um, what is the next issue that you want the Eco Champions to resolve? Um, I like the idea of the food waste. Um, from a school's perspective, we look at two things. One is our environmental footprint, which we're reducing, but also a way of reducing the school's costs. So funding can be used elsewhere in, within the school. Two areas that we could look at there are our gas bills and our electricity bills. So how can we reduce our electricity usage with our lighting and the gas in terms of our heating? That would be quite a good uh, project, I think, for the next time. Thank you so much. Now back to the studio. Thank you, Laura. Our Eastleigh Media team have been involved in the latest production of the movie Leo. Here's Bobby to tell you more about it. Thank you, Casey and David. I'm here with the Head of Media Studies and Director of Photography, Mr. Moss. So, Mr. Moss, what is the meaning of Leah? Well, the film Leah is about a girl who's going through quite a lot of dramas in her life. She's got a rare blood disorder called sickle cell anemia, which basically clogs up her arteries and causes her severe pains. Lots of people in the UK suffer from this, and the director of the film, Atosha Hilton, she wanted to do a, a film that was not only really dramatic and meant something to students to people, young people and old people, but she wanted a film that would highlight the subject of sickle cell anemia. Um, what, um, how long did it take to edit and shoot this film? The entire process took us from about summertime last year to now, so that's probably about six months. I wasn't involved in the editing of it, but the actual filming took about three days, I would say. Some of which, some of which was actually shot in Eastleigh with some of the students of Eastleigh as extras and production assistants. What, and what do you think that outcome will be of this film? I think it's quite an exciting film, and I think it's going to do really well because it's going to be launched onto the, um, the, festival seat, uh, the festival scene. So that means that it will be entered into lots of different festivals and judged against lots of other short films. So I think it will be actually do quite well. And as you can see from the posters behind us, we're actually doing a showing at Eastleigh tomorrow for the first time in front of a public audience. And what cinema productions came into this film? Well, I'm a director of photography, and what that means is that I work with the director to make their vision come to life. So I, um, I frame things, I light things, and just make it look as beautiful as I can. And this, and this is me and Mr. Moss talking about the film, Leah, and I hope you will all come to the film tomorrow at 4.15 to 4.45. Back to Casey and David at the studio. Thank you, Bobby. Now over to Mekit for the weather. 
Hello everyone, good evening. Looking at the weather for the rest of the week, it will be dry with some sunshine for many after low clouds and fog clears as the day goes on. Later on the day, we're looking at temperatures reaching 10 degrees Celsius around London. It will be also be cloudy across central and southeastern England with light spread isolated showers. Occasion rain is also expected in the north, reaching, reaching Scotland later on in the day. It will be a fairly cloudy Friday with light and patchy rain moving towards the southeast. For those temperatures reaching around 13 degrees Celsius around London. For those of you watching the solar eclipse this Friday, unfortunately there will be some clouds around blocking the magnificent view. At the moment it also looks like a few breaks are possible, more so towards the west and southwest of England and perhaps West Wales. The clouds will then clear from southern Britain early on Saturday, rain and freshing winds arriving across northern Scotland on Sunday, drier elsewhere. The week will end with the cold weather. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you, Merkit. Although a technology school, EC has a proud history of sporting achievements. Here's over to Beatrice for the latest news. Hi, I'm here with the latest sports news at EC Community School. On the 17th of March, the year 10 girls met 14 won 14 to 3 at Brampton Academy. On the same day, the year 8 lost, unfortunately lost, um, 1 to 2 at Brampton Academy. Here we have the play of the match, Eva. How did you feel during the game? Um, during the game, I felt frustrated because having the United on our team, it was an advantage and a disadvantage because their passes were not as good because they don't train with us. But overall, it was a good game. Thank you. What advice would you give to the year eight? Um, work hard. It's a long way to go. Thank you very much. Back to Casey and David. Thank you, Beatrice. Recently, a group of business study students set off to Stratford to start on their own market stalls. Here's Joyce and Umran for more on this story. Hello, my name is Umran and this is Joyce and we're here at Stratford reporting for EC BBC News Score Report. We're here today to cover a story about a selected number of students have won a competition which has allowed them to open and run their own market stores. Stratford has recently undergone extensive regeneration, which has culminated in hosting the 2012 Olympic Games. Stratford Market has been running for over 15 years, and now Eastleigh students are becoming part of this legacy. So what was your initial inspiration behind setting this particular type of store? Well, lots of kids like painting the faces, so we, so we thought that it might be fun for them, and teenagers like doing the hair and all that kind of stuff. And what was your particular role in all of this? Um, I was doing sales. So how did you come up, come up with your business plan? We came up by f thinking that if we buy gingerbread men and little kids can decorate on a Saturday, there'll be quite a few kids, so it'll be more interesting for kids to decorate themselves. And how's the experience been so far? It's been good. It's like, it's good for a further business if you're gonna, because we're doing business as an option. When we're older, if you're gonna try to build up your own business, give you a taste how to start your own business and how hard it is. Yes, ho, 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 hello, so would you like to buy a biscuit for a missus, sir? Could you introduce yourself and a little bit about what this project is about? Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Jason Ford and uh, I'm the Youth Community Enterprise Manager. Essentially, it gives young people the opportunity to practice trade. So the ultimate aim of it is to let young people get an experience, get a feel of frontline, working with the public and actually doing trading. Yeah, so all the groups you see here today have actually um, gone against like hundreds of other young people and have actually won the opportunity for them to have a stall here. So how do you think Eastleigh students are stacking up against the other students here? <laughs> well, like I said, it is a bit competitive, so everybody is taking it seriously. Um, I think Eastleigh is doing extremely well. They've come up with some really good and um, practical ideas, to say the least, in the time that they've had. And um, I think they're actually going to do really well by the end of the day and make some profit, of course. So what is your business plan? Um, in school we decided that, we sh on Monday, we decided that we should sell lemonades and cakes because they were quite cheap. How has the experience been so far? It's, it's been quite fun because like, um, we're out in the rain but we're still trying to sell and we're making some money so it's always fun to make money. How has your buying experience been so far? It was very good, yes, it was very helpful. Very polite. How did you get all the children involved in this project? Um, we had community links workers come into school 
and they offered them the chance to take part in a competition. So they applied to the competition first of all. Oh, okay. And what's the experience been like working with them? So far it's been great despite uh, the unfortunate weather. They've all been working really hard. What has their biggest challenge been? Um, to organise themselves within the really short time frame they had to work with, which was Monday to today. So as you can see, the EC Community School students have been working extremely hard here today, trying to make their source of success in the actual business working environment. This has been Imran and Joyce reporting for BBC News School Report. Thank you, Joyce. This has been David, Casey and the rest of the team reporting for BBC School Report, Eastleigh News. Yeah. Yeah.